Hey everyone, Kevin here with Victory 4x4. In this video, we're gonna be installing a set of our blitz sliders on a 2022 Nissan Frontier. So we'll start out here with the slider leg install on our 22 Nissan Frontier. Here I have the front, middle, and rear legs. These are gonna be side specific, so you're gonna to have to do a couple things to kind of figure those out and where they go on the vehicle as you get started. All of these legs are gonna have aero cutouts in them. You'll kind of see it up here on this bracket or down on the leg itself. Those are gonna be forward facing, so point them toward the front of the vehicle. This one I have here is the front leg, so you can kind of identify it by these two kind of inward legs as it's mounted on the vehicle. Here's the center leg, similar style without those two little wings on it. And then the rear leg, which is gonna mount kind of to an angled up portion of the frame, which is why it has multiple flanges here on this bottom end. Now, as you're getting started, if your vehicle was equipped with a factory step or rock slider, those are gonna to need to be removed so that these sliders can be installed. And then we can start things off with our front leg. As you go to slide the front mount into place, you're gonna be pushing it up against the frame and the body mount here. First of all, if your frame has this sticker, go ahead and just pop it out so that you have access to the hole here. And then you'll slide this up. Make sure the bottom tabs are lined up inside of these kind of stamped gussets on the bottom. Make sure all your holes are lined up and then push in and forward nice and tight. And then you'll want a marker to mark this hole here that we're gonna have to drill out to half inch on the body mount. Now, as with any hole we're gonna drill during this install, you're gonna want to start out with a nice center punch. We're just aiming for the center of our marked slot location here. From here, you wanna start with a small pilot bit. I believe this one is an eighth inch and we'll work our way up using a couple intermediate sizes all the way to half inch. Something we found does work pretty well here is a step bit as well, since there's plenty of clearance on the backside to drill all the way through to that half inch size. Ideally, anywhere that we drill a hole, you're gonna to wanna to touch up the paint just to prevent the introduction of corrosion. You can use a touch-up pen like I have here or a simple can of spray paint. With that hole drilled, we can now slide the mount back into place. And in that location, you'll be installing the one inch long, half inch bolt with a washer and the half inch serrated flange nut here on the inside. Go ahead and leave that a little bit loose until all of your remaining hardware is in place. In the two bottom slots here, you'll be using one inch long 3 8 bolts with 3 8 washers and flange locking nuts. Before the two remaining bolts can be installed, you'll first need to slide this nut tab into the frame. You need to identify lefts and rights here, so when looking at them in this orientation, you wanna make sure that it steps up toward the front of the vehicle, and then you'll slide it in through the oval slotted hole here on the inside of the frame. and then you can work on lining that up with the holes on the outside. Holding on to the nut tab with one hand, my right hand in this case, you can then get it lined up with the hole and install a half inch by inch and a half long bolt with a washer through this outside slot. And go ahead and get it started in that tab and then move forward and do the same thing on the forward mounting hole. Now the middle mount is gonna install in a similar fashion to the front mount. It also has a flange that will mount tight against the body mount and you'll have to drill a half inch hole through here. Once you get this pushed up tight into place, you're gonna have two more holes to mark and drill here on the bottom. Those will be drilled out to 7 16 
Now the drilling process for all three holes is going to be very similar to up front. You want to make sure you center punch those and step up your drill bit sizes as you go. Just again, be sure that you're drilling this one out here on the body mount to half inch and these in the bottom to 7 16 You do not want to oversize those. Now if you're drilling these bottom holes with a step bit or a unibit like I have here, you may need to come back in with a conventional 7 16 drill bit and kind of finish these holes off or run the rest of the way through as there is an overlapping layer of material here where these are welded together. The reason for that is simply because the height of the steps on each step size of this bit are not deep enough or adequate enough to get through both layers of material up here on the frame. Now don't forget to use touch-up paint as needed in the hole out on the body mount. And then in these two bottom holes, we provide you with half inch thread cutting bolts to cut threads into those. And then you'll remove these and install conventional hex head hardware along with washers when your mount goes into place. For these, you just need a three quarter inch socket and ideally an impact. With your 7 16 hole drilled, you can apply pressure to the impact and run this in to cut your half inch thread. Additionally, if you have a tap and die set and a half 13 tap, you could simply tap these out and skip the thread cutting bolts altogether. With all your holes in place on the frame, you'll install this again with a half inch by one inch long bolt through the body mount and half inch by inch and a half long hardware in the other three bolt hole locations. For the forwardmost bolt on the outside of the frame, you're gonna be using, again, a half inch by inch and a half long. And then on the inside, you're gonna to have to feed a washer and a nut through this hole you see here. One thing that you can kind of use as a tip is just sliding those on a screwdriver and then feeding it up through here. Kind of angle your screwdriver up so that you don't drop those off as it goes through. And then you can push that all the way out through the hole in the outside of the frame. And then kind of applying pressure against the back side of the nut in the washer. You can slowly feed the bolt into place from the outside and kind of carefully feeling to make sure you're getting those lined up. Make sure you're not dropping the washer. You can begin to get that nut threaded into place. Now this part is not necessarily difficult, but it is a little bit tedious. You do have the potential to drop the nut or the washer down in the frame and you wanna avoid that if at all possible. So just take your time with this. You could also, if you have one available, use a magnet to help feed those into place. Just kinda of use the tools you have and do your best here getting that bolt and nut in place. Your rear mounting leg is gonna install here where the frame starts to slope up toward the rear leaf spring mount. Most of you are likely going to have a factory stamp steel gas tank skid in place here under your gas tank that fastens with this Torx head bolt. Ours has already been removed obviously for some tank skid R&D, but to get that removed, you simply need a T40 Torx and that should back out pretty easily. With that bolt removed, you can then slide the mount into place and the easiest place to start is by simply reinstalling the bolt to hold your bracket in this location. Now, if you are reinstalling that factory tank skid or an aftermarket gas tank skid, you wanna make sure that they're mounted over this surface of our bracket and not underneath between the frame. Then just above that in the two slotted holes out here, you'll be installing the provided 10 millimeter hex head bolts. These are going into pre-threaded factory holes on the frame. Then for the forward hole here on this mount, you'll need to find your more or less straight nut tab. There is a small bend in it out here with the pre-installed nut. This is gonna slide up through the slot in the bottom of the frame as well as the bracket here and line up with the slotted hole out on the side. And then again, half inch by inch and a half long bolt with a washer. Lastly, you have a slotted hole here as well as a round hole up here where you will need to drill and tap 
Again, using those half inch self-threading bolts and then install your longer half inch by inch and a half hardware with washers. Now during this step, we did kind of snug up all our remaining hardware, just enough that it holds the mount nice and tight to the frame so we know these are centered from side to side. And then we're gonna choose to simply drill through the bracket here using it as a guide. But if you do not wanna risk damaging the powder coat or anything on the bracket here and having to do some touch up, you could mark and remove this to do your drilling and tapping as well. And just like before, you'll follow the same kind of drilling and threading process here. Again, just a final reminder, these get drilled to 7 16 With all your mounting legs loosely installed on the truck, you can then move on to some assembly with your slider boat. We're gonna start out by just installing the lower skid to the slider boat itself. That just uses 5 16 button head bolts with flanged head nuts. It's gonna have four along the back flange and four on this outer flange here. So what we find is typically pretty easy to do is just lift the slider over and set it right down into the skid and then just work to align the holes by sliding it side to side. You should then pretty easily be able to get things lined up and install those black 5 16 button heads, again with serrated flange nuts on the inside here. And kind of like everything we're doing, you want to just make sure that you're getting these all installed loosely before tightening any in place. With all eight of those installed, you can grab a 3 16 hex or Allen wrench and tighten these up. While we're in here, we can install the 5 16 and M6 clip nuts that we'll use to fasten our step plate into place later on once this is up on the truck. You're gonna have six of the 5 16 that go in the larger holes along the bottom edge here. These simply slide on to each of these tabs and should snap into place and then kind of move and float freely in there. Same thing with the M6 up here along this top edge. The only difference here is you should have five instead of six in this location. We can then install our rock lights or step lights into each end of the slider. If your light's equipped with a blue plastic cover, go ahead and remove that. And then we're gonna provide you black 832 button heads to get these installed along with nylock nuts for the inside. So there's a cutout on the back side that allows you to easily slide this into place. And then you'll have to reach through and install that nylock nut. And then with that loose, you can do the same thing down here on the second bolt. And then you'll need a 3 30 seconds hex and 11 30 seconds socket or wrench to hold the nut while you tighten this up. As you're tightening these in place, you just wanna make sure that they're centered on the hole as well as possible, and that you kinda of tighten them down evenly so they sit nice and flat to the backside of this face. With that hardware tight, you can just tuck the wires up inside of the slider boat for now until we get this mounted up on the vehicle and then do the same thing on the other side. At this point, we can install the slider to the legs on the vehicle. So we put a couple microfiber rags down just to kind of protect the powder coat as we're sliding this into place. If you're doing this in your driveway, for example, with a floor jack or some jack stands underneath, we recommend you do something similar to protect the underside here. You'll install the slider boat to the legs using half inch by one inch long bolts with washers and serrated flange nuts. For this, you can kind of start by just lifting up one end and getting it lined up on one of these holes. You'll pass the bolt through into the slider with the nut on the inside. Just pay attention with your slider only bolted in on one end to make sure that the furthest end of it's not getting too close to the body panel down on the other side. And then we'll simply lift it up into place, start another bolt down here along with the nut. And 
and this should hold us lined up well enough that we can then install all the remaining half inch hardware. At this point, you can use the horizontal slots in the slider boat to adjust this from front to rear. Now there's quite a bit of slot here, so it's really just kind of up to your interpretation on what you think looks best on your truck. Once you're happy with that front to rear adjustment, we can install our step plate. For this, you just want to slide one end down into the slider boat in the opening here, and then you can kind of slide it back and down just underneath this edge. From there, you're just looking to begin lining up all your mounting bolt holes. Then you can grab the logo tread plate and slide it down in on top. Again, line up your bolt holes and then grab your 5 16 black button head bolts to begin threading those in place. Now with all six of the 5 16 bolts started in the tread plate, you can then grab the smaller black M6 button heads and install all five of those to the back flange here and into those clip nuts that we installed earlier. Once you have all that button head hardware started, you'll need a 3 16 hex to tighten those 5 16 bolts in the bottom and then a 4 millimeter hex for the M6 stuff along the back. At this point, we can just work our way back through and tighten up all our remaining hardware. Now the tools you use are gonna vary a little bit depending on what you have available to you, but generally speaking, you'll need a three quarter socket and wrench to get your hardware tight here between the slider boat and the mounting legs. Specifically, you'll need the wrench in these tighter locations inside of here where you have that tight angle. For all of your half inch hardware here along the side mounts to the frame, you'll be using a three quarter socket or wrench. Your three eighths hardware here on the bottom of this front mount will require a nine sixteenth socket. Now here we're looking at the mid mount, again, just using a three quarter socket on these, but something I wanted to point out is just pay attention with all of your mounts and look for any gaps as you go to tighten these up. If you see a little bit more of a gap along the bottom or any gap at all, you can start by snugging these up to pull them out tight to the frame and kind of vice versa. If you show a gap out here, start with your side hardware. Other than that, there's no real specific order in how you get this all tight. Then the only real difference on this rear mount is you'll need a 14 millimeter ratchet wrench or socket for those 10 millimeter flanged hex head bolts. Now again, on that factory gas tank bolt, you'll use your T40 Torx. And then just as a reference, the passenger side will just have kind of an empty hole here as there's no bolt or nothing to thread into over there. And one additional difference over here on the passenger side is this factory wire harness that runs up along the frame. As you're getting our legs installed, you may just need to temporarily remove some of these clips from the side of the frame. And specifically here on the back, due to some interference with the clip locations, you may need to tie this back in with a couple zip ties here. Now from here, the only thing left to do should be to tie in your slider lights or rock lights. How you do that is really up to you. It depends on whether or not you're gonna wire those into an individual switch a dome light circuit or even a big switch controller. So that's gonna vary quite a bit from individual to individual. Aside from that, that's everything you need to know to get these installed. Now, if you do still have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always email us at info at victory4x4.com or call us at 269-459-8447.